What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So this is the new 15 inch MacBook Air. And I'm really excited about this because unlike most of your other favorite tech YouTubers who bought this to unbox, make a video about, and then return to the Apple store or who were otherwise sent one by Apple themselves, I bought this for myself to use as my new primary laptop. In fact, this is literally the first brand new MacBook I've ever purchased. The reason for that is I genuinely think the 15 inch MacBook Air is the perfect balance of size, portability, specs, and price. And I think it may quickly become the default MacBook option for like 95% of people. My 15 inch MacBook Air, you can see here, is in the midnight color. I'll give you a closer look in just a second, but it's actually a much darker blue in person than how it shows on camera in this bright, overly lit office. Inside the box, you still get all the usual Apple things, like a packet of paperwork and some color matching Apple stickers which everyone still seems to love. You also get a really nice thick braided color matched USB-C to MagSafe charging cable. I'm a big fan of MagSafe by the way, so I'm happy to have this back. And with the 15 inch MacBook Air, you also have the option of either a dual port 35 watt USB-C power adapter or a 70 watt single port USB-C power adapter. I went with the 70 watt plug. You can pick either one. There's no price difference or upcharge. I personally just wanted the faster charging speeds. The new 15 inch MacBook Air starts at $12.99 for the base model, which gets you the regular M2 processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. Now that price is $200 more than the smaller 13 inch base model M2 MacBook Air, but there's a little price caveat here that I just wanna mention. Going from the base model 13 inch Air to this new base model 15 inch Air doesn't just get you the bigger screen, but also a 10 core GPU versus an eight core on the 13 inch, and the 70 watt wall plug free of charge, like I mentioned. But when you compare the, I guess, mid spec 13 inch MacBook Air that Apple advertises right next to it for $1,399 to the mid spec 15 inch MacBook Air for $1,499, that $100 difference doesn't equate to anything else besides the bigger screen. All the rest of the specs and options are the same, even if you bump up the storage or the RAM. It's only ever a $100 difference. So keep that in mind when you're shopping around and also consider this. The base level 256 gigabyte SSD on these MacBook Airs is a slower single NAND drive with 30 to 50% reduction in read and write speeds compared to the 512 gigabyte and higher SSDs. And the RAM and SSDs on all these MacBook Airs are soldered to the motherboard and can't be upgraded or changed after the fact. So when you buy any new MacBook Air you'll want to future-proof it in a way and maybe opt for more storage or more RAM. That's what I did. I don't really recommend getting more than 512 gigabytes of storage, though Apple's SSD price, especially for two terabytes, is insane. You can get a couple external drives for way, way cheaper than that. But opting for 16 or even the weird 24 gigabytes of RAM is definitely worth it. You're still going to be many hundreds of dollars cheaper than a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro. And to protect my new MacBook Air, by the way, the very first thing I installed is Intego's 5-in-1 security suite, their premium bundle X9. Their security software is specifically made for macOS. It's optimized for the latest version of macOS Ventura and the newest M2 MacBooks like this one. Their Mac premium bundle has five apps in one to keep you safe. The most important one, I think, is the virus barrier. It's a real-time and on-demand scanner that blocks suspicious apps, auto-detects malware, and disinfects your Mac if it's already been compromised. It can also detect Windows and Android malware, so that doesn't spread to anyone else you work with, and it can even detect malware on iOS devices by scanning public folders. The virus barrier has a 100% detection rate, according to independent tests, and even detects malware faster than Apple. NetBarrier is a two-way firewall that analyzes incoming and outgoing internet connections to block any nefarious actors trying to gain access to your computer when you're working from home or the office or off a public Wi-Fi network especially. Content Barrier blocks all the awful stuff you don't want to see online, and you can filter specific content, keywords, websites, 
Besides, washing machine will scan your computer and show you duplicate or unwanted files that may be slowing down your computer. And there's also personal backup, a quick and easy way to set up and schedule multiple backup options and create full bootable system backups for your entire computer. If you're interested in keeping your Mac safe with Intego's premium security bundle, I'll leave a link down below in the video description that'll take you to a hidden discount page where you can get 60 to 70% off any of their software. Thanks so much to Intego for sponsoring this video. So hardware wise, aside from the bigger screen, most everything with the 15 inch MacBook Air is identical to the 13 inch. You have the MagSafe connector and two Thunderbolt ports on the left side and a headphone jack on the right side. Up top, you'll see the updated 1080p FaceTime camera and a similar iPhone style notch, which it's great to have a better built in webcam on all these MacBooks, but a notched display on a laptop is not something I think I'll ever really like, to be honest. And it's sort of unnecessary because there's no face ID sensors. There's no face ID at all. We still have touch ID on the keyboard. Speaking of the keyboard, I'm coming from the touch bar MacBook Pro with the butterfly keys, which was the worst keyboard ever made. So even though this is a thinner keyboard on a thinner laptop, it's still, I think, pretty good with deep enough key travel. And it's certainly wide enough to type comfortably too. And you might notice no speaker grills anywhere. The 15 inch MacBook Air does have speakers, of course, and good ones at that. Six, in fact, built in speakers, two more than a 13 inch MacBook Air since its bigger size can facilitate that, and they sound really good. Now, if you're curious about size, unfortunately, I don't have all the other MacBooks to compare. I do still have my old 15 inch touch bar MacBook Pro though, just so you can see something. It's actually smaller than it in more ways than one. The new 15 inch MacBook Air is not quite 13 and a half inches across, less than nine and a half inches in depth. Most importantly, it's less than half an inch thick and weighs just a little more than three pounds. Those two measurements beat both the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook MacBook Pros and the portability of the 15 inch MacBook Air outside of the screen size, mostly the thickness and the weight is another reason why I like it. I tend to carry my laptop around in a backpack when I travel, so being thin and light is relatively important. But having a big screen is also important. And this is the first time a MacBook Air has had a 15 inch display. It's technically 15.3 inches from corner to corner diagonally, and it's the liquid retina LCD display coming in at a resolution of 1864 by 2880 exactly, kind of the unusual Apple specific dimensions. And it peaks out at about 500 nits of max brightness. Now, if there were a but to be had with the 15 inch MacBook Air, this is probably it. It's a great laptop as a whole with a big screen, but the display is dimmer and it's lacking in features. The MacBook Pros, for example, get a higher resolution XDR display that's two or three times as bright with 120 hertz pro motion. This display on the 15 inch MacBook Air is more or less just a display. It's gonna be perfectly fine for most people, but I think it's the one gripe I do have that almost made me consider a MacBook Pro. And actually, let's talk about this 15 inch MacBook Air versus the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, because I think it's important to understand what you do or don't get going either way. So in going with the MacBook Pros, you actually end up getting a lot more. A couple more Thunderbolt ports, along with an HDMI port and SD card slot, and support for more than one external monitor. The 15 inch MacBook Air only supports a single external display via one of the Thunderbolt ports like I have here with my Apple Cinema display. The reason for this is supposedly a limitation with a regular M2 processor in the 15 inch MacBook Air. The Pros have the M2 Pro chip with more cores and more power. You also have higher RAM and SSD options, both with the base model Pros and when specking them up. The MacBook Pros also support faster charging, but the 15 inch MacBook Air has a slight battery advantage. You'll get more life out of it compared to the 14 inch Pro at least, and similar hours of use compared to the 16 inch Pro. Now, all of the advantages with the MacBook Pros are great, but you are certainly paying for all of it. I realize it's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison with the screen sizes and specs to the prices. Apple does this thing where no matter what options 
options you choose on any MacBook for usually $100 or $200 more, you can suddenly get a little better processor or the bigger display. And before you know it, you've gradually jumped from a $1,600 Air to a $2,200 Pro. But you really have to weigh whether or not those things are worth it for your needs, your workflow, and your day-to-day -day usage. Like I said, for 95% of people, if you're doing web-based stuff, schoolwork, work work, even casual photo and video editing, you're not really going to need any more than what the specs on the 15-inch MacBook Pro offer, assuming you also just specifically want the bigger display. And assuming you stay within a couple hundred dollars of the base model MacBook Air, I think it's a great value. Most people aren't doing anything on their laptops that warrants a 19-core GPU or 32 gigabytes of RAM. If you are, great, get the Pro. But even for me, editing 4K videos and Final Cut, the regular M2 Apple processor is more than enough. Toss in 16 or 24 gigs of RAM on top of that, and for under $2,000, you can now get a 15-inch MacBook that's slim, sleek, lightweight, and portable with Apple's in-house silicon and software to optimize performance. And that's going to be more than enough for most people. That's why I think the 15-inch MacBook Air is now the MacBook to buy. But what do you guys think? Am I missing something maybe? Is opting for the MacBook Pros really worth it? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.